cheerleader, so I'm confident she can project her voice to the back of the room. Uh, but we've got a, a lot to cover here today, so I do want to go ahead and jump into it. So with that, uh, Nikki Tepper, and she is going to teach us all about e-file in 45 minutes. So you'll walk out of here and you'll know exactly how to do it. <laughs> So can everybody in the back hear me okay if I'm this loud? Okay. As he said, my name is Nikki Pepper. I'm the chief deputy in the district clerk's office, and I've worked there about 14 years. And for the past eight months, my life has been e-filing from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And it is not fun. <laughs> for me, anyway. Hopefully, with working through um, with Tyler Technologies and um, the attorney's issues that have already come up, it's much easier and Hopefully y'all will get some good information out of this and I will give time at the end to ask questions if you have anything that I haven't covered that you would like to know. Okay, so first thing I guess everybody needs is what will they need to e-file? Hopefully everyone now has computers in their office and you're not going to the law library to use theirs every time because that will be very helpful. Um, if you do not have a desktop scanner you will probably want to invest in one. Um, oh, there's lots of different um, desk, excuse me, desktop scanners that you can use. However, the one that we have in our office um, is the Fujitsu F1, FI7160. And this scanner gives you great options for the e-filing system. Um, at our public terminals there in the office, you can come in there and simply hit an already prepared template scan your document through, and it is set up through all the required standards that they want on their documents. And so that might be something that you look into is investing into a, a scanner that will give you the options that you need. Um, a lot of programs are out there that will give you the options that you also need for um, e-filing. A lot of attorneys are using Adobe Acrobat Pro. It is a program that you do have to pay for. However, it's very simple to use. It allows them to do numerous other things with their documents that they want done. Um, I've heard it's very useful in their office, not only for e-filing, but for other aspects of it. Um, there is also, I've heard of a Nitro Pro 9 CD that you go and you can purchase at the store and install that program into your system that <laughs> does not have a monthly fee associated with it. I'm not quite sure how much the initial CD cost, but if you're going to look for um, something that, that's helpful to you, that may be a way to go. We use Foxit in our office. Um, I'm not sure how much the county pays for that. I can tell you it's probably not much, if that's what they gave us. It's probably a very inexpensive program to use. Um, and it does do what we need it to do. Um, you will need an email account. You can have one associated for your entire office. If you have multiple attorneys, um, you may want to create one that e-filing is strictly for, that may be helpful if you have quite a few um, secretaries and attorneys filing and you just want one person to be able to look at the information or if you want everyone to be able to log in and not have to have someone else's password to get into their personal email account. You may create one for your office, um, but you will need one. And then you also have to have a business debit or credit card. Um, you can use your personal one if you want to go that way, but I would recommend you getting a business one because it is the only way that you can pay for stuff. You will not be able to come into the office afterwards and pay for um, any type of service or filings that you need done. Um, the final thing that you will need is an EFSP. It's your electronic filing service provider. This is very important and there are multiple ones to choose from. There are nine different ones that I've looked at um, and they all offer different things. There are EFSPs that are free um, so every individual filing that you do will be free of charge unless it's associated with court costs. Um, however, some of the EFSPs do charge, and they charge you because they offer different services. They will keep track of all the money you, you've spent through their system. They'll run you weekly reports. They have 24-7 someone on hand anytime you have a phone call about their system there to answer it. And also they offer um, different type of trainings through the EFSPs, um, through webinars, that type of thing. You can do um, your own research. You can go to efiletexas.gov, and the first screen that pulls up says, do you have an EFSP? If 
but yes if you already do, hit no, and it sets up in a template every EFSP that's out there and what they offer so that you can compare and find out which one would be best for your office. So when you do e-file a document with the clerk's office, there are state requirements pertaining to that document. You can go to the technology standards and view all the definitions and references and that type of thing if you'd like to. However, if you're not tech savvy or in the IT world, you're not going to understand what they mean. I don't even know what they mean. But I can tell you that um, one of the parts that you do need to pay attention to is the digital media standards. It does require that all documents be filed on 8.5 by 11. It has to be a text searchable PDF. OCR technology is preferred. And then if you have a scan document, it has to be 300 DPI. Also, every document that you submit can only be 300 pages long. If it is a larger document than that, there is a way to do that. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. Digital signatures on e-filing have been a big question. How do we get it on there? Um, does it have to be a signed signature that's kept into your computer? It can be if you want to do it that way. There are programs out there for you to have your signature stored into your computer. Some of them cost money. Um, there's EcoSign that's associated with Adobe. And then um, that one does cost money. And then I've heard of HelloSign, which is a, another signature application that is free. I'm sure in, with any application or program, there's usually a free 30-day trial that's out there. I would recommend that you go and use it and make sure you like that system before you commit any money to it. Oh, and I'm sorry, I clicked that before I was finished. The, um, for those of you that do not want to, want to have your signature stored into your computer, just in case someone gets into it, um, the uh, slash s slash and then your name typed onto the document is an acceptable signature for the purposes of e-filing or for any document that you want to have put, brought into our office. Okay, so to actually get into the e-filing process, I am going to demonstrate it whenever I'm done with the presentation. So I'm going to give you a lot of information right now that you may look at me and be like, I have no clue what she's talking about if you've never actually looked at the system. <coughs> But it'll make sense in the end. So when you file a new case, if you use eFile Texas, which is a free site, they are the main site associated with eFiling. They are through Tyler Technologies, which is the um, company who, own, who received the contract through Texas to do the eFiling. Um, when you pull it up to file a new case through the system, you are only given a limited amount of options to pick from. They are um, standardized throughout the state. So if you're filing with Wichita County or with any other county, your options are going to be the same. And they did that to try to make it easier on the attorney so they weren't so confused as to what do they pick? Are they picking the right thing for the money? Um, the cost associated with it will already be on the screens depending on the options that you pick. So you don't have to figure that part of it out. But these are the um, civil case types that you will um, have the option of picking. Once you pick um, a case type, it'll give you the option to pick um, what it is within that case type that you're doing. If you go into the civil contract, um, that's where after that you would pick that you, it's going to be a debt. If you went into the civil injury or damage, that's where you would pick the car wreck option. You may um, need to play with it a little bit and become familiar with it before you know what you're doing. Anytime you can't find your option on there, just click Civil Other. And at the clerk's um, stage of it, we can change that for you to whatever it is that you're trying to file. Please don't do that every time. We will not change it every time. We will call you and say, we're rejecting this. Please pick the correct option. Um, same thing with family, you're given a limited amount of options. The only difference with family is once you pull it up, they've done an update on it, and now you also have the AG options, but you can't pick them. So I don't know why it allows you to see that. I asked them that question and they said, I don't know, that's what we were told to do. <laughs> so these actually are the only four options that you'll need to pay attention to, but it does list all the AG's options 
at the very beginning of them. But it's the same thing, once you um, get into it, it'll actually give you the options to pick whether or not you're filing a divorce, whether or not you're filing a name change. Um, if you can't find your right option, there is a family other that you can pick too that we can change for you at our end. <clears throat> so once you pick your case type and what it is and you've got that far, when you file an original petition, once again, the state standardized it to where you only have three options to pick from. You can file an affidavit of indigency, an application, or a petition. And that is it. If it is not an original case, you're in the wrong box if this is where you're at, which I've had plenty of phone calls asking me, why isn't it giving me the right options? And it's because you're trying to file a new suit, and that's not what you want to do. But when you um, pull it up, the affidavit of indigency and the um, application of petition will be all that you can file. And there is um, still required the civil case information sheet that needs to go along with every original petition. Because that is not an option for you, what you can do is you can add that as an attachment to your lead document. Your lead document would be the application or the petition. And then add your um, civil case information sheet as your attachment. Same thing with if you wanna file a letterhead that you don't necessarily want file stamped, you can add that as an attachment also. The lead documents on any filing will be the only thing that gets a file stamp on it. So if you start filing your motions as attachments because you want it sent in with your application, we will reject it because we will not file stamp those and we know that you're wanting a file stamp on them. Um, if you are filing an original petition for divorce and there's not a TRO or anything else associated with it and you want service done at that time, you can put your request in an attachment and make sure you pay for all that up front and we can do it that way. We will not require you to file in another um, envelope your request because if you are using an EFSP that does charge for every filing, they will charge you and we're not wanting you to spend any more money than what you have to and that is why we are also not charging the $2 fee that can be associated for the clerk's office with every filing. We are not doing that through our office. So if you've created a case and now you do have a TRO or something else that you want to enter into it or a, um, it's a case that's already ongoing and you're coming in and you want to file a motion for hearing, you would do it as a subsequent filing. Um, when you pull up the options for subsequent filing, there's very limited things that you can pick from. Most of it is stuff that we charge for because that's the only way we can get you to pay for it up front is to make it an option for you to pick. Um, if it's not something that, that we charge for, like a motion for hearing or something like that, all you would simply use is the option that says motion no fee. If it's simply a Rule 11 agreement and it's not a motion that you're requesting from something from the court, please file it as a document no fee. Because when it comes into our side, we're trying to look for something if, um, if it says motion, we're trying to look for if you're requesting a hearing within the document, which um, if you are sending in a subsequent filing and you do have a hearing that you need signed on page three, set up and signed, please let us know that information under the comment section when you're filing because we don't necessarily look through every document if it's 500 pages, if it's, you know, 15 pages, we don't always have the time to go and look through and see what you're trying to do. So please make sure that you let us know any extras that you would let us know at the counter through the comment section. Um, subsequent filings for civil cases are also just very limited. It's just the, pretty much what we charge for. And then you have some other options that you may need um, on there. So I thought, you know, there's a lot of information that you're going to need, but what is the important stuff for e-filing? 
Okay, so when you file a proposed order, there is a way to do that through the e-filing system. The way our county is working is you file your order with us. It does not have to be signed. It would be sent in as a proposed order. We can then at that time forward it to the judge who can review the motion and review the order and sign it or not sign it and send it back to us and let us know what he's going to do with it. We can accept it if he signed it and we can reject it if he didn't. Um, the only problem that we're having right now is the way that the e-filing system works is when you send us a proposed order, you send it in what is called an envelope. If that envelope has multiple lead documents in it, such as you sent your motion and your order in the same envelope, if we accept your motion, you will not get a response back telling you that we accepted that motion until we complete that entire envelope. So if we forward that order to the judge and it takes him five days to sign it, you won't know that we accepted that motion until five days later when we've actually received that order. Now for <coughs> counties who are integrated with Tyler Technologies, yeah. Thirst works great and it doesn't do that. <laughs> However, we are not integrated with them, so therefore I don't think they're trying to fix it. So that you can follow your proposed order in its own envelope, um, but then again, if you're charged per envelope, then that might be something that you, not, you do not want to do. So just keep that in mind. You can send multiple lead documents within one envelope as long as it is pertaining to the same case. But just keep in mind that if you do send that order and it's something we're forwarding to the judge for you, that is why you are not getting notice back on your other motions that were associated with that same envelope. Um, please make sure that when you do file something, it follows those required standards that I talked about earlier. We have decided as an office, though, because it has become an issue, that we are no longer going to check if the documents are text searchable. We have spoke with some other clerk's offices and um, a lot of them are not checking. There are still a couple counties that are, so if you have a system and a program that works and it allows your documents to be text searchable, I would continue to do that and send them in that way just because you never know if a county's gonna accept it or not. And that is the reason why it can be rejected. However, we're not gonna check that on our end, so if you have a document that you scan in that you just can't figure out how to make it text searchable, um, please know that that's not a reason why Wichita County District Clerk's Office is going to reject it. So another question that I've received a lot is, if I submit it to you and you don't get to it until the next day, what's my date of filing? Your date of filing is your submission date and time. The only time that that will ever change is if you try to file something on a holiday or on a weekend. If it's filed on a weekend, it'll go to that Monday's date. If it is filed on a holiday, it'll go to our next open business day. Um, but documents are um, available to be filed for that day submission up until midnight. So even though we're not open after five o'clock, e-filing is, is if you're trying to hit a deadline, you can make it. Um, another thing is, <laughs> Um, credit card charging, because this is a system that has some flaws in it as far as how do we get the correct amount from the attorneys and make sure that everything's paid up front. Um, we do have the option at the clerk's office to change what type of document it is that you're trying to file. Um, and with that, it can change the fees that are associated with it. We will tell you that we will never charge you a higher amount than what you have tried to submit to us. But we will lower it if that's if that happens to be the case. Right now, if you file a family suit, everything that you file is gonna be $273 when you click it to us. Because that's the highest amount a family suit can cost, which is a divorce case. And we have no way of knowing that you're gonna pick all the right options, so we try to make it easier for you. But if it's not a divorce case and it's a name change, once we receive it, we're gonna change that for you and only charge you for the name change amount. So please know that um, once you received your um, response back in the email that tells you that we've accepted it, please check how much we've actually charged you if you know it should be a different amount than what you submitted to us because that may change. I have created a couple things for our county webpage that can be helpful for <coughs> e-filing. Um, there is a frequently asked questions, a couple things that I've had to deal with um, page on there that you can look up if you have something you think it. I'm out of the office for some reason and someone else in there can't answer you. It may be something I've answered on there. 
Also, there are service sheets that are specifically geared towards e-filing to make sure that you pick the correct options and we're not constantly rejecting your documents saying you haven't paid enough. Um, these service sheets are on our webpage and you can print them off and have them there in your office. Um, but they uh, tell you exactly what optional services to pick when you're trying to file this and you're asking for service. Or if you're asking for something extra, it's going to tell you what you need to pick so that you can make sure that you're doing everything correct up front so that we can accept it and proceed. The optional service box through the e-filing system is where you are going to pay for everything other than your initial filing fee. If you want us to prepare a citation, if you want the sheriff to serve it, um, your writ options are in there. Please remember with any service, we have to have copies. And if you're not going to bring a copy into the office, you're going to have to pay for it through optional services. When you click that box, if you have four or five defendants that you need service on, it gives you that option to pick how many people you want service for. So you need to hit five, it'll charge you up five times for whatever service it is that you're requesting. So I received something through my email the other day that talked about e-filing throughout Texas and they did some um, statistics and apparently Wichita County was one of the highest in rejecting documents. And so I figured I'd tell you the most common reasons why we do that. A lot of it was because we were checking to see if documents were text searchable and they weren't. So we were rejecting them. Um, which we are allowed to do. However, that's not going to be an issue any longer. So hopefully those numbers will go down. Um, but a lot of the other reasons are because when you do send in a proposed order, if it's something that the judge is not going to sign, we have to reject it. We can't accept it and file it in without a signature. That would be pointless. But that, I know, is quite a bit of it. And then a lot of it has to do with not picking the right optional services and not paying enough money to do what you're asking us to do. Um, when you do receive an email back from us, well, it's not from us, it's from eFile Texas, but when you receive that email back letting you know whether or not we accepted or rejected, there is a part on there that gives you our comments. Please read those comments, even if it is accepted. If there is a comment on there, please read it, because it's probably telling you we need something more from you. Um, if you have filed and you pay the correct filing fee, and you pay for us to do one service, but you ask for it to be served by the sheriff, and you didn't pay for the sheriff's service, we'll still accept it, but we're gonna tell you that you need to make sure that you send in um, that extra $75 so that we can send it down to the sheriff. And that message will be there on your comments. And right now we have a lot of things waiting because I don't believe people are checking their comment boxes. Because there's service needing to be done, but we're missing some part of the money, and we can't proceed with it. So please do. If, if it's rejected for some reason, if the judge didn't want to sign something and he let us know why he didn't want to sign it, we re relay that message to you so that you have that information also to know what it is that you need to fix or why he said no. Um, so when we reject something, the e-filing system actually gives you the option to still use that original date that you submitted it to us even if though we rejected it. If you were trying to hit a deadline and you sent it to us at 4.59, well, 8 o'clock the next morning, I said, nope, <coughs> and hit reject, and you said, no, it had to be filed yesterday. You can actually copy that document through the e-file system, and you would have to do it the correct way. You have to hit their copy button, and it's simply a click of a button. Um, that will bring that document over there to um, let you know on the e-filing system that you're using a different date that you originally submitted it, and it will allow you to resubmit it to us once you've fixed whatever problem it is and let us know that there is an original envelope and you need that date and time on it. That's all done through the e-filing system. That's not done through the clerk's <laughs> office. So if for some reason you do find issues with that, that would be something that you would need to contact your EFSP through. We have decided in the clerk's office that when we reject something and send it back to you, you will have three days to resubmit it to us if you want that original date used. Um, if you do it a week later, 
we're sorry, but we, we're not accepting it. That's just going to be um, the clerk's office policy. So I just wanted to give you a couple of um, web addresses that are going to be helpful, which is the county web page, which links you right to our district clerk's page. You can pull that up and it'll give you the um, frequently asked questions and the um, service forms that you'll be needing. And then also the eFile Texas, um, if you choose to go through eFile Texas, and they are a free option. So you may use them first to see how it's done. I'm sure every um, EFSP is somewhat similar. They can't venture way off because they're all given the same standard options for you to pick from. So you might go with a free one, and you can have multiple. You can have ones that charge, ones that don't charge. It just depends on what you want to use it for. Um, but it doesn't hurt to sign up on everyone if you want to. So I'm going to show you actually how to file, which I'm sure is what everybody wants to see. And it is very simple. site which is just where I can play around and do whatever it is that I want to do so that I could learn the system um, and this just shows you here um, all these listings are things that I've filed throughout my time trying to mess with the system and learn what it is that I'm supposed to be doing or not doing and this is how it'll look on your screen once you begin to file things anything that you file into or that you create a new case with will show up on your listings of filing so that you can review it, look at it, file subsequent filings into it. All the information you need is still there. Um, so I'm going to show you how to start a new case. What you would do is right here at this top box, you have to pick which county you would like to file into. They are supposed to be checking, I know we check, um, which county you have in your heading. Sometimes, and we've had it happen one time that we filed something that was supposed to be filed in Williamson County because it wasn't looked at before it was done. We can't refund your money if you do that. If you didn't want it filed with us and we accidentally accepted in, there's no way for us to refund your money. So please make sure that you're clicking on the correct county. <clears throat> so we want Wichita County, and then you have this red new case right here. And that's all you're going to hit. And this is simply how you create a new case. Um, you're going to click this option. It's going to make you pick Wichita County again. And then you're going to pick what category you want. What are you filing? So I'm going to go ahead and file a injury damage case, and it's going to be a motor vehicle accident. Okay. Your options of, um, I'm logged into my Wichita County DC filer. When you log in, you'll log into your, your own options, and then your information, your account information will pull up automatically. You shouldn't have to enter that in every time. Um, I'm sorry. Down here in this corner is how you continue to go through each page. And um, the first thing that you do, it'll pull up, it'll add who are you. Um, you'll be able to pick, if you have multiple attorneys within your office, you can click here and it'll um, allow you to pick which attorney it is that's trying to file this. information is in there um, it should allow you to go you shouldn't have to put any 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 other information if you have the addresses you can put them in there if you choose to um, it does allow you to continue if you don't have that party's address um, up here at the top is how you change from which party you're entering so I'll go ahead and click defendant and I'll say my brother hit me so I'm gonna sue him 
And at this point, I'm not going to know who his attorney is or any of that information. However, if it was a subsequent filing, I might know that, and I can um, add that information in later so that it's associated with him. If you have multiple parties, if it was um, me and, we'll say, my husband suing my brother, I can go down here and add another plaintiff and put his information there. And everyone that I list in here as a party to the suit will come up here at the top. I can delete them if I put in something wrong and didn't want it there. When I've entered in all my parties, I go back down here to this um, right-hand corner and hit filings. And this is where you're gonna select the option, um, your three options of what you can do. <coughs> Um, please enter in a filing description because that does help us um, if you enter in um, something out of the ordinary on subsequent filings or something like that it helps us so enter in as much as you can in that description to let us know what it is that you're trying to file here is the optional services box that I was talking so much about because it is a very important part of the system. Um, it gives you the options. I'm going to say I want to issue a citation. And I want service from the sheriff. You simply hit this add button. It'll ask you how many do you want. So I want one citation and one service. Hit OK. It shows up in this next box to tell you exactly what you did. It also shows up over here in this top right-hand corner telling you all of your filing fees so far. This is the area where I would add my document. Um, even if you didn't add a document here and you tried to go forward, it would tell you you're doing something wrong. So um, make sure that you always add your document. Your original petition is gonna be your lead document here. I'm going to go ahead and click Browse. And then hit Open. It's going to put my documents in there. And now, I would need to add a civil case information sheet, and that's going to be my attachment. So I'm going to go ahead and I know these don't say the right things, but they're the only documents I have in the system right now. <laughs> so, okay, so once all of that is done, um, your next thing is you, you have to pick the party that's responsible for the fees that are being charged. That would be myself since I'm following it. Um, and then you go over here down to your right hand corner, and it's going to tell me I'm going to do something wrong here. It's how I this box red telling me I need to give the clerk's office a little more information. It's asking for damages sought. And apparently, I'm going to want to make a lot of money off my brother. And then I can continue and hit summary. And this is just going to give you an overview of everything that you've done in this case so far. Um, make sure that your forms are in there correctly. You can check all that information. You can edit anything at this time. Um, and then you're going to hit submit. And it's going to tell you here in just a second that it's in it and it's going to give you an envelope number. Okay, so this envelope number now is what you are going to associate with that petition. You can always call the clerk's office and say, I have envelope number, blah, blah, blah. It's sitting there saying processing and this is day three later. What are you doing? It should never take that long. Um, right now, I have in our office, it should only take them within the hour that you've submitted it. Um, come January 1st, when we have everything and our office is flooded with it on e-filing, we may have to figure out a different <coughs> system, but right now it's happening within the hour. So once you hit okay, 
it now shows up on my filings list. And it gives me a couple different options. Um, I can still play with this over here in this area and it tells me, do I want to cancel it? You can, I come in five minutes later and I think, oh my gosh, I sent in so-and-so's petition with that one. I wasn't even thinking what I did. You can hit this button here and it'll cancel whatever it is that you just did. As long as we haven't accepted it, you still have the option to do that. Um, this document here, it says draft 85919. What happened was is I started to do something, I got interrupted, had to get off of it so that I could do something else. It saves that as a draft so that I can go back into it and not lose any information that I've already put into the system. Um, if the draft is completely wrong, I can click this X button and it'll take it completely out of my system and it will no longer be in my filings. Okay, so that's how you would file a new case. If I wanted to file something as a subsequent filing into an already existing case, there's a couple of different options that I can do. So if it's something that you've already filed into, it's going to be here on your filings list. So all you would have to do is go in here, I can put in the case number, and hit filter, and it's just going to pull up what pertains to that case. So that I can file into it, there's a little button over in this area, and it looks like a file folder, and it says file into case. So I can hit that button, and it's going to pull up the information, and the parties should already be listed. If another attorney's already responded, they should already be listed into that filing also. So I'm not going to worry about this because all this information is the same. Go back down here into your right hand corner and hit filing. And then this is where I can add my documents that it is that I'm trying to file. Say I wanted to do an amended petition, I'd hit amended filing. Um, if I needed service prepared on it, I would use my optional services buttons. I would click browse and download my document into there. So at that point, at any time, I can add multiple filings. If I, if I need to file five different things into this case right now, I can do add another filing and choose another option. All of my options are gonna go here to let me know what it is that I've been trying to do. Um, down here at the bottom, you're still going to add your lead documents. Everything's going to be a lead document that needs a file stamp. If you do want to send us a cover letter associated with all these filings, just as an explanation, I know you do that through the mail now, so you may want to continue to do that. You would do that as an attachment down here to these lead documents. Okay, so I'm just going to get out of this real fast and then show you Another way to do a subsequent filing would be if I don't know that if this is a case that we've done so far and I want to, I can hit go. And it's going to prompt me to either file into an existing case or file into a case not listed. So. <coughs> And then I can <coughs> create the case, and this would be for a case that's already into our systems now that's not necessarily into the e-filing system because this is something that's new, so not every case is going to be in the e-filing system listed. So I can go ahead and create that case without actually needing an original petition. I can add in all the parties, um, and I'll just show you if I try to go forward, it's going to highlight anything in red that I have to fill in before I can move on.
and then here it brings me to the options of where my subsequent filing listings would be. So once it gets over to our side, our screen pretty much looks exactly the same as this, but we have other options as to whether or not we want to accept something, reject something. Um, the screen looks exactly the same pretty much though. It gives you a listing of everything that's waiting there to be looked at and we should be going down the list as it comes in. So does anybody have any questions that they would like me to show them? Something else on the site or just questions in general? Oh, well, okay. Re repeat the question for the video. <laughs> when they ask the question, repeat it so I can pick it up. Okay. With regard to orders, is there any reason why we have to submit those electronically or can we continue to send those to the judge since okay. he's going to sign them? He's asked with regard with regarding orders, does he have to submit them electronically or can they present them to the judge in a paper form? So that's going to be up to the judges. As of right now, yes, they are accepting paper form. Um, the purpose of this is to go paperless. So they may decide that they do not want anything that's not submitted and not that's not submitted electronically to them. And we're going to leave that up to them. If you want to take it to the judge and they sign it on paper and you want to bring it to our office, we are considering that a document from the judge's office. We are not considering that from the attorney. Therefore, it does not have to be e-filed. Yes, ma'am. Um, I have a question. If, if, for example, I forget to um, pay for service, can I then walk a check over to you and give you a check for the service to the sheriff's department that I wanted to do? She's asking if she can give us money over the counter any longer. The way that's going to work is, depending on what EFSP you have, you may want them tracking your money, which I know some of them give you that option. Um, so it's kind of up to you. We're still going to have the register there at the counter. We're still going to allow you to pay for things. We just will not accept filings. Yes. Um, if we use a private process server, do we need to note that in the comments section? Okay. If she asks if she uses a private process server, does she need to give us notice of that? Yes, you do. Please let us know. If you are not going to use the service sheets provided online, um, because they do give you the specific option to mark that to let us know. If you're not going to file those as an attachment to your document to let us know, please put it in your comment section what you're requesting us to do because there's no way for us to know unless you let us know. And then, and then you said earlier that we need to bring you additional copies uh, for the process server to pick up. Is that right? Yes. You will have to bring additional copies for your citations if you do not pay for them online. Um, there is the option through optional services that says, um, it does say certified copies. That's the only option they allow us to give. So you can pick that and pay for any copy. Um, just remember it's a dollar a page. So if it's 15 pages, please hit 15. Um, if you have three defendants, we're going to charge that three times. Please hit 45. Um, but yes, if you are not going to bring copies into the office, for service, for us to attach to service, you will have to pay. Yes, Jeff. Can we view already filed documents? Um, if you find the case on the system, I do believe that you are able to pull up anything that's in there. Um, I can go here and um, view filing details, I'm not sure. <coughs> like I said, I'm not an expert on this, I'm learning it. <laughs> Also, um, so yes, I can view the documents that are on there. And so I guess if you do find it on the system, you can pull up anything that's been filed through the e-file system. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Yes. I just want to make sure I understood this right. If I file a petition for divorce, <clears throat> through e-file, I have to bring you another copy with the TRO, a physical copy, down to the courthouse. 
or pay a dollar a page. Correct. Are you going to print the first one for free? We're not printing anything any longer. Okay, you're not printing anything. Okay. There will no longer be files in our office to come and view anymore. They will, everything will be on the computer. I guess you would need to contact the judge's office. Once we send it to the judge, it is out of our hands, just like if you were to take an order over there for them to sign, it, it waits Walmart. in their basket. I'm sorry? How do we get file marks? I mean, that's 90% of what we can do. Once the judge days, signs it, he sends it back to us. And then at that time, we accept it. And then y'all send it back to the It'll automatically, the, we don't send it to you. The e-file system sends it to you. So anytime that we accept or reject something, the system itself will give you notice of that. And it sends you, what your notice looks like is your notice looks like this page. So it comes back looking like this page. It'll tell you all of the fees that we charge. It'll, tell, it'll show you your document. It'll say transmitted. Um, and that's the one that'll actually have your file stamp on it. But all that information is relayed to you through the system itself. I have a question. Okay. What kind of back, back uh, situation have you got going on this thing? Through the e-file system itself? Yes. I have no idea. That's all done through Tyler Technologies. They have their system. I'm assuming that they have a backup system somewhere off site, probably multiple backup systems. But I don't know. That's not something that we're required to do. What happens with an individual attorney's office if their system gets wiped out? You would have to contact your EFSP. And that's another thing. Like a lot of the computer system problems, if your documents aren't processing, aren't going through, that's not something you can call our office and we can handle. We have absolutely nothing to do with it. We cannot help you. We're going to say, call your EFSP. The only thing that we can do is accept and reject. That's all we have control over. Yes? So if we want to look at the clerk's file, other than coming to the county courthouse and getting logging in through using, like Sherry's ability to log in for inquiry, how do we, how do we view the clerk's file? So we can see everything that's been filed in that right. case. We do have um, public terminals in our office. We're going to get more after the first of the year, just so that it's available. Um, and then yes, the law library has access to our files. And will we be given a code so we can just log in or do we have to go? It's a public um, password that everybody uses. So will it eventually be where we can access that from our computers in our office? So we, we've talked with our provider about that. Um, I know we were reviewing contracts to have that available to attorneys. However, it will be something that's going to cost attorneys because it'll cost the county to put that information out there. Um, but it hasn't been finalized. But yes, we're hoping one day y'all will be able to view our files at your office. The three days for refiling after rejection, is that three business days? Yes. Okay. When you were entering all that stuff, I don't know if I missed it, but where do you go in to set up all your credit card information and add your attorneys? Okay. You do not do that actually from here. You will do that um, originally when you set up your account through whatever EFSP that you choose to use. You'll have that information um, there when you create your account. And then every time you sign into your account, it'll <coughs> pull up that information for you. On serving, uh, uh, on serving opposing counsel, 
once you're in, uh, following in an exi existing case and the other side is already there, can you, isn't there a place to enter the opposing counsel? There is. Um, there is an option to do an e-service through this system that allows you to get notice just like you're receiving notice <coughs> back. Anyone that you have listed on there with their email addresses will receive notice the same time that you do. However, it does not override our service. It is not the same thing. It is just simply a service through the e-file program that allows the other attorney to know what you have filed. If you need a citation, it still has to be done through the office. Can you view, can you view the entire contents of the file that you have filed into from your own office? No. You can only view what's been filed through the e-file system. So if it didn't start on the system, if the petition and everything happened beforehand, then that information is still only going to be able to be viewed in our office. Starting January 1st, when everything goes through the system, then we'll be able to view the entire contents of those files that we're a part of. Yes, it should all be on there for you to see. Yes. Um, every EFSP offers different type of training devices. Um, I know eFile Texas offers um, quite a few webinars. They offer just um, <coughs> videos on their site that you can watch to teach you how to do different things. It just depends on which, which EFSP you choose to go with. All right, we're, we're about out of time. We might have time for one more question in the, in the back here. Okay, so if you're getting a new petition for divorce and they have Well, technically, when you submit it, that's when it's filed. So that would be the date and time that's on that document. So if your time is before their time, and they came in the counter a half an hour later, once we get to yours, that's going to be. OK, but say in your Williamson County area, we file a Wichita for whatever reason they file in Williamson, they're going to be submitted at the same time. You can kind of slide it up? Pretty much. All right, and we're recording this today, so I'm going to put that on the, the county bar. It's got a, a YouTube channel that we're linking to our Gmail account, so you'll have access to that. For those of you in the back that couldn't see the screen, uh, you'll be able to see it. And two, that'll, that'll help to get it to people that, that couldn't come today. Uh, CLE credit, there's about 45 lawyers here. I emailed the, the course number to you, so you can go online to your My Bar page, go to CLE, and then put in your course <coughs> number and you'll get credit for it today if you choose to have CLE credit. Uh, some people no longer need CLE credit, so, so they, don't, they don't have to have it, the more mature lawyers. Uh, <laughs> the other thing would be, th thank you, Nikki, for coming out today and giving us a presentation. Talking to, if we could give her a I've talked to several other bar presidents throughout the state, and not every county has a, a clerk's office that's willing to to come out and give presentations and work with members of the bar to get to yes. It's going to be a, a process for everybody implementing this system. And so I'm thankful, and I think all the lawyers in the county are thankful that we've got a clerk's office that at least is willing to communicate with us and try to work through these problems so that we can can get a good, a good system in place. So with that, does anybody have any other announcements? We do have a new lawyer in the county, David uh, Lik Likiov. I think I'm saying his name right. How do you say that, Jeff? Lick of it. He passed the bar exam in November. I don't think he's here today. If you see him, tell him congratulations. The, the precious lawyer in Wichita County. And I don't know of any other, any other announcements that anybody has. All right, well, with that, thank you, everybody, for coming out. And thank you again, Nikki, for speaking to us today.